Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at some examples of if statements and how to make decisions in JavaScript. Let's get started. If statements are a great introduction to conditionals in programming. They let you make decisions within your code based upon the current state of data. Let's take a look at the basic syntax of an if statement. If a condition is true, execute some code. But if the condition is false, the program will skip right over our statement. But if we want to execute different code if the condition is false, we can do that with an else clause added onto our statement. Now let's look at an example. We will start by instantiating two variables. Let's set our first variable soup to chicken noodle soup. Let's leave our second variable reply undefined for now. The condition of our if statement is the value of soup. We are saying if soup has a value, set the reply variable equal to our string value. Let's use a template literal so we can include the value of soup in the string. And we'll finish by logging the reply value to the console. If the value of soup is false, which can also mean undefined, null, or equal to zero, our code will skip right over the if statement. However, that's kind of rude if someone asks for soup and we don't reply. Let's add an else clause to apologize for not having any soup to fulfill their request. Let's use a template literal string again so we can include the value of soup. We also need to delete the value of soup while leaving the variable undefined in order to see our else clause in action. Upon saving our changes, you can see our else clause says, sorry, we're out of undefined in the console. That's not a great message to deliver, but it proves undefined data is considered false. Let's change the reply to a message for our customers instead. Now let's put the chicken noodle soup back in place and declare a new variable named customer is banned, which will hold Boolean data. We'll add an if statement that checks if customer is banned is true. If it is, we'll reply, no soup for you. We can make this part of our previous if statement by using an else if before we check the value of soup. It is important to think about the logical order of an if statement. Why would we check for soup if the customer is banned? They can't have soup even if we have it ready to go. Therefore, we should check if the customer is banned before checking our soup status. Let's add one more variable named crackers. Crackers will also hold Boolean data. Now let's copy our else if clause that checks soup and paste it back into our if statement. Now we will modify the condition. Instead of just checking for soup, we are checking for soup and crackers. This condition once again needs to come before our condition for just soup. If the condition for soup was above our condition for soup and crackers, all orders for soup and crackers would just stop when the condition for only soup was true. No one would get their crackers. If we don't get the logical order correct, we could have angry soup customers. All right, let's move on to a new example that most of us should be able to relate to, test scores. We'll define a test score variable with a value of 89, and also a grade variable that we'll leave undefined. Instead of just checking if a test score value exists, we will add the greater than or equal to 90 stipulation. If our test score meets this requirement, our grade is an A. We don't have an A, so our code will just skip over the rest of the statement. If we log the value of the grade variable to the console, we get undefined. The logical order of an if statement is like a waterfall. As we add the if else clause to our statement for a B grade, we can simply say if the test score is greater than or equal to 80. This is because any score 90 and over will not make it to this part of the statement. It is the same as saying any score from 80 to 89 because of where the clause is positioned in our statement. Let's go ahead and complete the rest of the grading scale. As we get to the end of the grading scale, we can just use an else clause because we already know that any test score that makes it to this part of our if statement is going to be less than 60. Let's do something different inside the else clause. We'll start with a new college student variable with a true Boolean value. Inside the else clause, we will nest another if statement. That's right, we can nest if statements inside of if statements. 
In this case, if college student is true, the failing grade is U for unsatisfactory. Otherwise, the failing grade is F. Let's try it out by changing the test score to a 59. Okay, one more example that will really highlight decision tree thinking. My goal is not to execute this code, but rather give you an outline of a simple rock, paper, scissors game. After the tutorial, take the next step and complete the code on your own. The first condition we will look for is a tie game. If we do this later, we will have to keep repeating the code in each clause. It is logical to look for a tie game first. In the first else if clause, we'll check to see if, a play if player one has a rock. If so, a nested if statement will check if the computer wins or player one wins. We don't have to worry about a tie game because of our logical thinking to start off the if statement. We can repeat this pattern for paper. And as you might have guessed, we just need an else clause for scissors because it is the only option left for player one. Now you have a full outline for a rock, paper, scissors decision tree. That wraps it up. I hope you've gained insight into if statements and their logical patterns. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.